What's the relationship between the length of a pipe and the pitch of a sound? Well, I'm going to make some straw flutes. So we take a, a piece of straw and some scissors and we just chop the ends, ed, ends off in this shape here. So we make a point just like that. Now, the next thing is that we give it a little bit of a, a squeeze. We want to try and squeeze these ends together like this. And you might even need to bite them as well. So I'll show you that in a second. Look, the thing is, sound is produced when something vibrates. And the straw flute produces sound when these little ends vibrate. So the idea is that we just gently push down here with our lips and blow the air through and it makes these little things vibrate. So I'll give you a little demonstration. We'll just give it a try and get a little bit tighter together. We want to try and push them in so they're like, here's one I prepared earlier, this one definitely works. So let me show you um, how it sounds. So here's two, um, a long one and a short one. One's approximately twice the size of the other one. So let's see what sort of sound we can make. Okay, here we go. So here's the short one. And here's the long one. Okay, so the short one. And the long one. So, what's the relationship? So, what we noticed was that if we decrease the length, we increase the pitch, and the pitch is the same as the frequency. So we have this inverse relationship between frequency and wavelength. So there's an inverse relationship between the length and the pitch. So that means that as we decrease the length, we increase the pitch, or with this one, we increase the length and we decrease the pitch. Now, a little bit more scientific, we can talk about wavelength, which is the width, the, the width or the length of a particular wave. Now, with what are these pipes are an example of, of a, a pipe with one closed end, because we've got this open end here, but the end that is um, in our mouth is closed. So with a pipe with one open end and one closed end, the wavelength of the sound wave is four times the length of the pipe. So what I can do is I can draw a quarter of a wave inside the pipe, and that's what that would look like. So if we were to continue that on, four times the length of the pipe is the wavelength. So we could um, measure how long this pipe is. In fact, let's do that. Let's measure the length of this pipe, and we're going to say that it's six centimetres. So the length of the pipe is six centimetres, and the wavelength is, is four times that. So the wavelength is going to be 24 centimetres. Now, to work out the frequency of the sound, we use this formula. The speed of the sound is equal to the wavelength times by the frequency. Now let's assume, given it's about 18 degrees in here, let's assume that the speed of sound in the air at the moment is 340 meters per second and we know our wavelength is 24 now 24 centimeters we don't normally use centimeters we're gonna to have to convert that to meters so 24 centimetres is 0 0.24 metres. What is our wavelength? So we need to rearrange our equation so we have frequency by itself on the left-hand side. So that's frequency equals wavelength. Uh, frequency equals the speed of sound divided by the wavelength. So we've got 340 divided by 0.2 four and that gives us a frequency of one four one six um, point six and of course the unit there is Hertz
So we're able to calculate the frequency of the sound that was produced by this um, pipe. Now, we could do the same thing with the other pipe. I think we assumed that it was about twice the length. So if that's 12 centimetres, um, if the, the, the wavelength is double, that means the frequency is going to be half. So the, the other pipe has a frequency of around about 700 hertz. What does that mean? It means that it's vibrating at 700 times a second.